Hello, in this video I will explain how to implement an algorithm for solving mazes using a wall following approach with proximity sensors. The algorithm itself was previously explained in, a, in another video but it was explained in a conceptual way. Here in this video I will explain it how to, uh, actually what I, I want to do is uh, to explain how to implement this algorithm uh, with Coppelia Sim VREP software uh, and in particular uh, I'm going to uh, use the Dio robot, a low cost robot. So the aim of the presentation is to know how to solve a maze with uh, simple uh, connected walls uh, in Coppelia Sim software. So to do this uh, I will explain how to program the robot so it can be solved uh, or it can solve a maze following walls either on the left or walls on the right and actually the ultimate uh, goal is to explain how to implement this in an efficient way so it can be uh, implemented in the, these ideas in low cost robots using proximity sensors such as the Dio robot. So as explained in, uh, in the previous video the algorithm has four states. In the first state the robot must follow the wall uh, and then from this state we can, uh, it could happen that we need to make a turn this is a pure rotation, if uh, we detect a wall in front of the robot or make a 90 degrees turn if we stop detecting the wall that we were following on the side. Okay. So after uh, these turns have been completed and then the algorithm uh, ensures that we uh, return back to the wall following behavior. So the, actually the algorithm ends when the robot detects a mark in this case we will use a line painted on the ground indicating that we have reached the exit of the maze and um, walls um, will be detected indeed with leader sensors on both sides of the robot and the walls in front of the robot will be detected with an ultrasound sensor pointing forward. Okay. And uh, the, uh, the, the sensor to detect the, the line uh, on the floor will be actually the TCRT500, uh, uh, 5000 sorry. So, to implement this algorithm uh, we have divided uh, uh, the problem into two different stages, the actuation and sensing. Uh, it is uh, clear that actions uh, to be taken by the robot will be implemented in the syscall actuation function and um, all the conditions that uh, allow us to move from one state to another will be indeed implemented in the sensing uh, stage. Okay. So here I show you the code that you must implement in the syscall actuation function and as you can see um, we're using the variable state uh, that must be implement, uh, initialized uh, to 1 in the syscall init function. This is the initial state where robot is and depending on the state value uh, the robot must do uh, one thing or another. Uh, for instance uh, in state 1 we must follow a wall, this is uh, achieved by calling, uh, calling a wall, uh, follow wall function that will return uh, the wheels velocities or if we are stayed in uh, state 2 or 3 we we'll must apply pre-computed values uh, for those wheels to make the proper turn or to make the cure. Okay? So to detect the conditions in which the robot changes from one state to another we will implement those transitions in the syscall sensing function. Here I show you the code to implement although there are few steps needed to be completed first. Okay? In particular uh, the ones regarding with the uh, reading the proximity sensors and also we need to evaluate the conditions whether if we have uh, detected a wall in front of the robot or uh, we are detecting a wall uh, uh, on the side. And this, uh, these conditions must be set uh, using the variables in this case wall front and wall side. These, they are boolean variables. And in addition to this, here I also include the code that will ensure that the robot, when the robot is in, indeed in the states 2 and 3, it's when it's doing the turn or the curve, uh, the robot lays in these states at least for a minimum amount of time. And this time uh, will be actually pre-computed according to uh, the speeds uh, you, you, you can uh, compute them in the, in the is, um, syscall init function. Okay? and these times are indicated here with the variables mean turn time and mean curve time. And at the end of the function you also need to implement the condition if you have detected the line then you have to set the state equal to 4. So 
in order to read the uh, distance from proximity sensors, uh, this is, um, is rather quite simple and this is actually something we, we have already seen in uh, several times in previous videos. Here I show you a function that will allow you to obtain the distance uh, from a proximity sensor and the variable max dist is used to ensure that the sensor returns a value between zero and the maximum distance and uh, it, this was some uh, convenient in, in some previous exercises although for this uh, maze sol uh, solving problem this is not a relevant parameter as long as it's large enough. Okay. Ideally uh, set this value uh, to the maximum distance detected uh, by each of the sensors and indeed uh, this is something um, you, you can uh, see how I configure it here using the ultrasound on the leader sensor which properties I'm using for each of the sensors. Okay so remember that you have to call this get distance function for each of the sensors for the ultrasound and the leader sensors and this must be done in the syscall sensing function. And then the algorithm to follow the walls uh, was explained also in previous videos. The main difference here is that we follow the wall only using the sensors on one, of one side of the robot. Um, here you have some comments at the beginning of the function I'm proposing so to help you to understand how this works. Okay? So on the, on the one hand we need a distance measured uh, with the sensors and on the other hand uh, we use uh, the variable direction to determine whether if we want to uh, use the right or left side sensors to follow uh, the wall on the right or on the, on the left. And uh, we also have or we need to provide obviously some constructive parameters of the robot such as the wheel radius and the wheel basis and also the expected di lateral distance to be measured. This is something we can uh, uh, pre-compute uh, and also uh, we need to uh, provide the velocities and uh, the gain and the distance of the off-center off kinematic control that will allow this wall following algorithm to actually uh, uh, make the robot to stay uh, just in the middle of the, the cell. So uh, the function uh, or the, uh, the wall detected function will be used to determine if the leader sensor detects the wall on one side or not. This is done for one single sensor you have to do, do call this function for both sensors actually and uh, in fact um, this function basically returns a, a boolean variable that will return true in case uh, that the absolute value of the difference between the measured distance and the expected distance is less than a given tolerance and this tolerance is a value that you must adjust in this case and um, this the expected distance is something uh, we saw in the previous, di uh, in the previous video uh, how to compute it and uh, depends basically on the cell size and the, the, uh, the wall thickness and the separation of the leader sensors uh, with respect to the middle line of the robot. And also we have to uh, implement or we remember that we need to implement also uh, a function or a, or a condition to measure if we have a, a wall in front of the robot using the ultrasound sensor and this is as simple as checking if the measure distance is below the expected distance in front of the robot. So when the robot has to make a turn it will use a pre-compute or some pre-compute values returned by in this case the pre-compute turn function. This function returns the angular speeds of the wheels uh, in order to make this 90 degrees turn and also the minimum time to perform this 90 degree turn. In the case uh, or in this case we need to provide uh, the turning speed, uh, the v-turn parameter as well as the direction of rotation and some constructive parameters of the robot in order to compute uh, these values. Similarly we can uh, pre-compute uh, the values of the angular uh, wheel speeds to make a curve, 90 degrees curve. In this case we will have to provide both the speed uh, we want to make this curve and also the, the, the direction as well as some constructive parameters of the robot and the cell size in this case. And finally in order to detect the mark that indicates that we have reached the exit of the maze we will use an orthogonal uh, vision sensor with in this case with a single pixel resolution that will emulate the TCRT5000 uh, infrared sensor and this sensor actually is uh, pointing uh, towards the ground, towards the, the floor and its configuration uh, is actually the same that we use in the line tracking video 
and here I show you the get uh, line color function that you can use in order to return uh, the value of uh, the the gray grayscale value of the ground we are detecting uh, with the uh, single pixel that the sensor has. And this value is approximately 0.1 when detecting a uh, black line. So if you detect something below that threshold, then means that you have detected the line. So in this video, I have explained how to implement the algorithm for solving mazes using proximity sensors following a wall on one side. Thank you very much.